but basically uh, just come out for a quick couple hour session after after work. The plan today is to have one last sesh down the um, northern end of the bay, which is down towards Black Rock again. There is an absolute stack of boats out here. I do want to slowly start making my way down towards Karen, Frankston, that sort of area, but obviously with the stupid weather that we've been having, the water temperature is still low. Um, even though we had a couple of hot days, I still feel like they're going to be a bit slow to fire up down that way. But I think in the next couple of weeks, they will definitely head down there. So I just want to do one last session here. I'm more concerned about getting a big fish rather than numbers of fish, but if we do end up getting onto a few two, three kilo school fish, I'm not going to complain. So. Hopefully we can we can get onto something a bit bigger, but um, might have to leave that for the next few weeks. But today, it's just about getting one last session up the northern end, and then we'll make our way down. So we've put out our spread, put down our burley. It's just the waiting game now. All right, we're on to our first fish here. Not a big one, but with the first fish, I always take it. I don't care what it is. It's a good sign. It's actually not too bad, man. Mate, might need the net. Grab the net. There we go. Bit of a bodgy net job. And there's our first little school fish for the day. There she is. Beautiful. That's a beautiful two kilo fish. And um, it's her first one, so hopefully they're starting to come on the bite. But that was it. And with that less productive sesh, it was time to move on from the north of the bay. Guys, a bit of a change of tactics now. Obviously, over the last few videos you saw, we've mostly been fishing from St Kilda to Black Rock, sort of that northern part of the bay. But I think with a few back-to-back -back days of hot weather, just the fact that all the school fish have been down that way, so all the smaller two, two kilo fish, a lot of pinkies, I think it's time to sort of get away from them a bit. So what I want to do is I actually want to start from now on focusing more on the southern end, so maybe from Karim to Mount Eliza. Mostly just sounding up around the structures, the reefs, the, the wrecks around there and, and seeing how we go and hopefully we can bring in something a bit bigger. Um, as you guys can see, this massive storm just passed over us. Hopefully that made the barometer go a bit nuts and hopefully the fish will, will fire up. Um, just in terms of the barometer, as you guys would know, um, some people are very particular about the barometer, whereas other people couldn't give two shits. Now, obviously some of us don't have the luxury to go out whenever we feel like it. So whenever you can come out, we come out. Um, and as long as you got a bait in the water, look, you're a chance to catch a fish. But in saying that, there is a truth to it. The reason being is the fish are very sensitive to air pressure changes. So for example, you hear a lot of people saying it's not good to fish on the um, low barometer. And the reason is because when there's low air pressure, it actually allows the swim bladder of the fish to actually expand. And when that happens, the fish can sometimes feel a bit lethargic, off balance, a bit uncomfortable. They're full, they don't really feel like eating, so they might not smash everything that they come across. And it's the opposite with a high barometer. So when it's a high barometer, the actual swim bladder of the fish contracts and they're a lot more active and they're a lot more hungry, so they tend to feed more. Now, in regards to the barometer, there is a sweet spot. So you'd hear a lot of people say the best time to fish is when you've got a high barometer and it's about to drop. So what that means is there's a storm coming. And when there's a storm coming, that means that there's a low air pressure system. So that means that the barometer is going to plummet. Obviously, knowing that the fish are very sensitive to these pressure changes, they can actually sense when the barometer is going to drop. So if the barometer is high and they're feeling comfortable, they can feel that and they're like, hold on a sec. In the next couple of days, I might not feel that great. So what they do is they start stocking up and they smash everything that they see. So that's why you tend to get those mental sessions just before a storm. So ideally, that's the best time to be out. But like I said, not everyone has that luxury. If you can go out, get out there, and you're still a chance to catch a fish. Um, now today in particular, even though we had a storm, the barometer was already low. So I don't think it's gonna make that much of a difference, but hopefully it does stir them up a bit. But we'll see how we go. Um, so yeah, that's a barometer in a nutshell. It's the best part. The anticipation of putting your first baits in the water. With this beautiful calm before the storm. 
This is on our first fish for the season. I reckon it's going to be your first legal snapper. What are you going to do if a 7 kilo one comes on? I don't know! <laughs> oh. No! <laughs> and as if that wasn't enough of a kick in the nuts, then this happened. Oh, no. you're kidding oh me. Oh my god. That was massive. <laughs> as you guys saw, we missed one absolute ginormous fish. I mean, I've never seen my rod scream off like that in snapper season. So as much as what feeling a bit down about that, it's, it's only the start of the season and, and it's going to start firing up now. And this is only the start of it. So stay tuned. Definitely going to be doing a lot more trips over the next couple of weeks. And hopefully we get onto a few big dogs. All right, this is going to be our first proper take of a day out off Karam. Obviously the other day I only spent a couple of hours out and i um, got a couple of good hits, but today we're going to do some hard yards and we're going to do some work. We're going to sand around, around Karam, between Karam and Frankston. And, um, you know, hopefully we can, we can get onto a few fish. So let's finally get Moe onto a fish because, as you guys know, he's a bit of he's a bit of bad juju on the boat. It's like having a banana on the boat. Now, our, well, my initial plan was to follow that fishing charter. Bad's fishing was saying that that wasn't really fisherman-like. So we're going to do our own thing. Let's get on some big bad boys. All right, guys. First fish of the day. Is it a fish? Is it head shakes? It's head shakes? It's a bit weird. It's sort of, it's just heavy. It's not doing much. Okay, so we might have a banjo on. Could be a banjo. Could be Could a also banjo. also just be a lazy snapper. I hope it's a lazy snapper. What is that? What is it? It is. What, a snapper? Yeah. Oh my fucking god, where's the net? Where's the net? Right. There we go. Number one on the board. Fuck it, that's actually like, alright. Bro, I'll fucking froth that. There yeah, it's a good start. Yeah. That's why you always realise on my boat, freaking we always end up with the small one to start with, but hopefully the bigger ones to follow. Wonderful. Since we got that first fish, deployed the burly bucket and um, cut up some pillies for Billy. So that way, if they're around, we'll hopefully bring it towards the boat. Um, last time I was out here as well, literally probably two minutes after I threw out the Billy, bang, the rod's absolutely went off. So it definitely works. It definitely gets them going if they're in the area. Bro, I can't get it relax, 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 relax. Take it easy, only reel when it's not fighting. Sorry, sorry. No, 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 no. Someone went to go. Do my arms look big in this? <laughs> Bro. What is this, man? Should I drag it? Should I tighten that up a little? Yeah, a little. Shit. This is how you know your gear stacks up. <laughs> Uh, at least your knots stack up. My knots go alright, mate. I've been fighting this thing for what, 15 minutes? Look at the size of this ray. Bro, look at that. What a creature. What a fucking machine, bro. What, what the fuck is that? Unfortunately, on this day, the fish weren't firing up in Karam, so we headed towards Frankston and started sounding up. So basically what we've done now is, Karam was a bit quiet, so we've moved away from all the boats and we just sounded around from between Karam and, and Frankston. And we found this spot um, just in front of Frankston and there was a few marks on the sounder, so we burled it up, threw the baits in. First bait in the water actually just got a hit, so fingers crossed there's fish in the area. Bro, keep going. Get the fucking chili damn the fuck around. I'm looking at your rods, bro. Wallah. 
There you go, we're onto some of these. They're getting a little bit bigger. That's the biggest for the day so far, probably a couple of kilo fish. Good fish. Good fish. I think this is going to be the best of our season so far. I do anything like this. Big fish. Yeah, it's not bad. All that persistence paid off. We we're at Karen for what four hours, yeah. And then, um, before we headed in, we're like, let's just go sand around Frankston a bit. Found a few marks, and that's the result. Look, Look at that. that color! I finally got my big fish. Look at that color! Look at the blue underneath. Wow, there. wow, wow, wow. All right, let's get back to it. I've got that little tacker as well. Not a bad fish at all. <laughs> oh, yes, that's my PB so far. Move on. Alright. Go ahead, bring it in. Go ahead, bring it in. Go ahead, bring it in. Beautiful hand size. They're pan sized fish, but they're fish. Let's do it, come on. There's Haddock and his fish. Re-rigging because that one absolutely took everything. My boy, he was always my bogey man, and now I've caught my best fish on this boat so far with him. So looks like he's turned the tables. But honestly, guys, like persistence pays off. If you're not getting any fish, don't feel disheartened. Just keep going. We're about to head back in. Found some nice marks in the sound. Well, you know what? Straight out, we haven't been lazy this whole morning. Yeah. Been changing baits, and we try to play the patient game because obviously we don't want to move around too much. But then later on we said, you know what, instead of calling the day, let's actually move it and not be lazy. Beautiful. Here we go, to finish it off. To finish it off, as you can see, two baits left, not even. And there we are. Yeah, grab the grab this, grab this. Why not? Oh, it's half decent. Huh? Yeah, fuck that. Beauty. Got a way to finish it off. We only needed a, we only needed a couple of fish to get our full bag limit. Last two baits. Bang. There we go. One more we'll just top it off. Alright guys, that's a wrap for this video. It's been a pleasure having you guys along for the journey. I haven't been doing snapper fishing for a long time, so being able to get onto them for the last couple of years has been 
pretty sweet and um, obviously over the past few weeks we got onto a few nice fish biggest was about four four and a half kilo so there's a few good sessions there there was a few sessions of donuts obviously you saw on that last little bit um, when I went with with the missus we lost a couple of massive fish so my aim now has been to, to get that one big quality fish and we finally got it so that that was about I think it measured in about 76 centimeters so that, that's every bit of five and a half kilos that fish it's an absolute chief so stoked to have to have got that one so from here it's onwards and upwards obviously you know the the water temperature's only just heated up so we're probably coming into mid-season it's probably going to be a short sharp season with the water temperature spiking up um, so i reckon you've got another couple of weeks of um, hot bite around karen frankson area and then we're going to start moving our fishing down to the south out of mornington so stay tuned for that and yeah stay hectic Welcome back to another segment of Ads Cooking. On today's episode, we're gonna be cooking up one of the snappers that we caught the other day. And with us here is this lovely 55 centimeter model. But look at that, absolutely beautiful. So um, obviously, there's different ways to cook snapper. Everyone's got their way of doing it. Everyone's got different taste buds. Some people fill it up and shallow fry their fish. Um, a lot of people put it in foil and into the oven with a bunch of herbs and spices and some veggies. And me personally, I like slapping it straight onto the bar. Nice and easy, all we're gonna do is, And bang, that's all you need to do. She's ready to jump onto the barbie. So we'll go fire the barbie up and then we'll slap it on. All right, barbie's pretty much ready to go. It's smoking up. You want a nice hot grill. You want it to be smoking up like that before you slap it on. You also need one times tongs, one times spatula, and you also want one times half a cup of olive oil and a basting brush. So we'll grab our fish and we'll slap on the side that we've oiled up. And listen to that sizzle. Look at that. It doesn't get fresher than that. Straight out of the bay. Who needs to go to the market? So you'll find with most of my fish, especially ones this kind of size, I always put them on the barbie hole. Now a lot of people with their bigger fish, they'll actually fill it in. I do the complete opposite. So I'll fill it my smaller fish because I can't be stuffed with the bones. And I'll just dip them in a bit of flour and shallow fry them. And oh, it's just amazing. The thing with your bigger fish is when you fill them, you actually lose a lot of meat. Um, you got a lot of meat sort of in between the spine and in between all the bones. Not only that, but you've got beautiful chunks of meat in the cheeks. You've got the eyes, you've got the brain, you've got these wings as well, which tend to get wasted when you when you fill it a bigger fish. So if you guys have never eaten snapper straight off the barbie, trust me, give it a crack because it's absolutely beautiful. A big mistake that a lot of people do with fish is they overcook it. It's not chicken. You don't need to overcook it. Just think about the worst case scenario. If you overcook fish, you're going to end up with dry meat. If you undercook it, you got sashimi. All right, after about three, four minutes, we're gonna be ready for our first flip. You wanna do about two flips each side. Dang, look at that. Look at the skin starting to crisp up. And this is where my olive oil and brush comes into play. Now, what I do is every time I flip it, I baste the outside of the fish. And the reason why I do that is it keeps it nice and moist. So if you want a nice, juicy fish on the barbie, baste it every single time you flip it, trust me. And she's ready, ladies and gents. I wish you guys could taste it. I wish it could be taste tube, but it's not. Unfortunately, it's for my mouth only. So the rest is up to you guys. Go out there, catch yourself some fresh snapper, and trust me, chuck it on the barbie, baste it with a bit of oil every now and again, and you won't be disappointed. All right, guys, the other secret ingredient, and this is my mum's recipe. Grab yourself half a glass of olive oil, and you squeeze a lemon into it. And this is basically gonna be your pouring sauce on top of, on top of the fish. You whisk that up and you should end up with a consistency that looks something like that. And that is the most amazing fish dressing you'll ever have in your life. And give that a pour over it. Boys, listen to this shit. It's fucking hectic. Hectic, hectic, hectic. 